Brucellosis. This is going to be a real quick one. Um, this isn't a very common, um, commonly uh, encountered um, pathogen, but it is one that is mentioned from time to time, um, particularly as a cause of like a foodborne illness um, or association with livestock. So we'll cover this one fairly quickly. There are four species of Brucella, Brucella abortus, Brucella melitensis, Brucella suisse, and Brucella canis. Um, this is a gram negative rod. It's a very small gram negative rod. Um, it's a non modal organism. It doesn't have a flagella or pili or anything like that. It's non encapsulated. So that's good, right? Um, non encapsulated means it should be fairly easy to phagocytose, which really helps out our innate immune response to the organism. It's very slow growing, and that actually can be somewhat um, problematic because slow growing means that we have a longer period of time to wait before we can diagnose what exactly the organism is if we're trying to figure out the causative agent. Um, and on top of that, it also has some very um, specific growth requirements. It's a strictly aerobic organism, and it has actually um, complex growth characteristics in that it requires an excess of CO2. So for any of you have, who have done cell culture in the past, most incubators in the lab are set at about 37 degrees and about 5% CO2. Um, that's normally about the conditions that most bacteria are happy at. Um, this one actually requires a higher percentage of CO2. So not only is it going to grow slowly, but it's going to need a different growth characteristics than many of the other bacteria you'll be trying to isolate from the patient to see if they're the um, causative organism. It does have some biochemical test readouts that can be helpful in its identification, namely urease and oxidase, for which it is positive. So rather than drawing out my own infographic, I decided to find one from um, this lovely group here with their watermark. But really, um, brucellosis is the disease. The disease actually exists on a bit of a spectrum, depending on what species and then strain within that species of brucella that we're dealing with. Um, brucella abortus and canis tend to produce a mild disease with some very rare suppurative complications, whereas B. suisse causes destructive lesions and has a prolonged course. Um, brucella melitensis causes really severe disease um, and that's because there tends to be a higher concentration of the organism within phagocytic cells. So we have a harder time getting rid of B. melitensis than we do the other ones. Um, the disease kind of has a standard um, course, though, if a patient is going to show symptoms. It's going to begin anywhere from one to three weeks after exposure. Now, that may seem like a fairly long period of time, which makes sense because remember, I said this was a slow growing organism. It's not just slow growing in culture, it's also slow growing inside the um, patient. So that's why from the time you experience it to the time there is a high enough bacterial burden that a patient is actually experiencing symptoms can be a pretty long period of time. Initially, the symptoms are going to be pretty nonspecific. Fever, chills, weakness, lethargy, uh, muscle and joint aches, and headaches. So this is kind of all those undifferentiated fever symptoms, right? So malaise, um, myalgia, arthralgia, probably some anorexia, a little bit of gastrointestinal upset is pretty common. Sometimes we'll see like a non-productive cough, depending. Um, and the fever is kind of undulant, it comes and goes. If a patient has um, kind of a more severe case, we can see further GI symptoms. Um, and you can also see like osteolytic lesions or joint effusions, um, osteomyelitis, things of that nature. You might also see respiratory tract symptoms, neurologic or cardiovascular manifestations. Those symptoms tend to be more dependent on the health of the patient. Um, that isn't to say that somebody who's, you know, neuro, um, cardiovascularly normal um, can't develop cardiovascular manifestations, but we tend to see more of those um, with brucella in patients who already have some sort of um, issue there. Chronic infection occurs when a patient is inadequately treated, okay? So what happens is the patient gets sick, or gets exposed, one to three weeks later, they experience these symptoms. Maybe they go and they're placed on antibiotics, okay? 
they then, for whatever reason, stop the antibiotics. In some cases, it's because their antibiotic course has come to an end. In other cases, they just kind of stopped it maybe half to a third of the way through. A lot of people are guilty of this. They go to a doctor, choose to get antibiotics because they feel terrible. The doctor gives them the antibiotics um, because hopefully they need them. We're not just giving them to anybody. And then, you know, after a day or two of antibiotics, they feel great because the antibiotics are doing their job. And then they forget to keep finishing their 10-day course or their seven or five-day course. So either way, in this case, the patient is inadequately treated. Then any time within three to six months of discontinuing the antibiotics, we see relapses. And the relapses are really associated with a, percent, a persistent focus on infections in the bone, spleen, and liver. Um, so it's not so much that you're gonna see the full systemic infection again, but you're gonna see con concentrated um, symptoms associated with a specific tissue group. Um, they're really just, like I said, they're associated with persistent infection of that tissue group. This isn't really due to antibiotic um, resistance so far, thankfully. It's really just that we didn't get rid of the pathogen in that particular place. Um, all right, so how do we diagnose it? Well, you can diagnose it in a couple of ways. Let me make a little bit more room here. Um, so remember, growth is going to be a little bit difficult because it's slow growing. So you're going to want to keep any cultures that you take for about two weeks to make sure that you've had uh, you've given the organism ample time to grow. Um, you can't consider it negative after like 72 hours. You can grow the organism out from the blood. There is a little bacteremia that occurs with this organism. You can also do this by serology. Antibodies are detected in virtually all patients and they can persist for months to years. So just because again, you're finding antibody doesn't mean the patient has brucella unless you think they were recently exposed. And one of the ways you can kind of um, distinguish that is by looking at the class of antibody, right? If you're seeing um, an increase in IgM, then it's likely that the patient has recently been exposed to brucella. If all you're seeing is IgG, well, then then maybe they had it previously, you can't really be certain. But then you can follow the antibody tighter to see if it's going down with treatment, okay, or if you're seeing a change. Um, so how do we prevent it? So one of the ways we actually acquire brucella is from dairy products. Um, so livestock are a huge source of brucella, soft cheeses, unpasteurized milks, um, soft serve ice cream. Um, I love soft serve ice cream. It's actually one of my favorite things. But soft serve ice cream is a great breeding ground for a lot of foodborne pathogens, listeria, brucella, things of that nature. So um, you want to avoid unpasteurized dairy products and uh, dairy products that are not adequately kept at um, cool enough temperatures. You can also control brucellosis um, through animal vaccination. There's an animal vaccine for brucella, not a human vaccine. Um, so we can vaccinate the animals and that'll protect us. Um, if a patient does develop it, you can treat them with either tetracyclines like doxycycline plus rifampin. Young children and pregnant women who really shouldn't be on doxycycline, you might try um, trimethsulfa um, as an alternative. 